The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hi, I'm Clem and today we are going to upgrade my maker machinery by building a tiny vacuum forming machine. Come on over. My own tiny vacuum forming machine is a pretty big project. That's why I got this big box full of parts from Element 14. Don't let this big box full of parts distract you. The actual machine will be about the size of a desktop 3D printer. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Vacuum forming machines are usually heating up a sheet of stock plastic, mostly polystyrene or polycarbonate or any other thermoplastic, and then they pull it over a mold with suction. So the core components of our build are a heat source and something to provide suction. First thing we need is some kind of box and a build surface. The mold will be placed on top. The plastic sheet gets sucked over the mold so the air has to escape somewhere out of this box and that's where we will attach our vacuum source. We have to heat up our sheet of plastic on the top and the moment it gets deformed and starts to form a little bow, we pull it down, start the vacuum and then we have our finished piece within seconds. So vacuum forming is great for building just shells of something. For example, RC car bodies are usually made with vacuum forming. So here are my core components of the build. I got a heat source which is a heat gun, I've got a suction source which is a vacuum cleaner and I've got a box which is just a toolbox. And I noticed that a lot of people commented on my VRPi video that they liked the fact that I left the FPV goggles as they are so they can use it for anything else and they don't have to rip them apart. So keeping everything intact made it more accessible to people and I want to keep that screen. So I will leave this heat gun as it is and leave the vacuum cleaner as it is, but I will control their behavior with a microcontroller so I can build a device that can be disassembled in three parts and you can use your heat gun still as a normal heat gun, but you can also use it in the vacuum forming machine and you also can use your vacuum cleaner as a standard vacuum cleaner if you need to. So there is no loss in value, you just add value. Here's a pro tip for everybody buying stuff online. Always make sure you order the correct plugs. This is an English plug and I'm in continental Europe where we use these plugs. So I have to change them. on it. Those parts are pretty heat resistant so there shouldn't be a problem. I will glue this part to the box and seal it so the vacuum only has to be inside this little area and not in the complete box so there's less chance that this will leak. The next part I want to install is the vertical gantry which is consistent of these metal rods. 
I will mount them with these mounting brackets I pulled out of a 3D printer. Those will hold some holders for the sheet stock that will be formed. So if they are warmed up, they will just slide down. I'm now making the frame to hold my sheet stock. This is about the size you can normally get when you just order polystyrene sheet. I will use some aluminium profiles to construct my mount. part is finished. Now it's time for the first test run and this run will be done with a one millimeter styrene sheet and I will control the whole thing manually so I know that it works and then I will switch over to producing the electronics and get this thing sort of automated. My test mold will be this 3D printed face. I printed it in PLA. I'm starting with the heat gun on the low setting because I have no idea how long this will take to warm up. Okay, there's a slight construction error. All the hot air gets off to the side and the plastic sheet doesn't get warm enough. So I have to reconstruct the heat gun mount. We have confirmed my machine works if you operate it manually. The next thing is to make it happen automatically. I'm starting the electronics build with an Arduino Uno and the I2C controlled keypad shield by Adafruit. So this has a LCD display and some buttons. I've soldered up the Adafruit LCD shield, which has a keypad. We will use this for the controls. And now the question is, how do we interface the Arduino with AC-driven appliances? The vacuum cleaner and the heat gun. And the answer is this thing here. This lets me remotely control my appliances, just with a flick of a button. And I will just hack this thing up and interface it with the Arduino. So the Arduino pushes the buttons on the remote control, which will activate or deactivate these remote outlets. So it turns out those are not tied to ground. The switches are matrixed in some strange way. So I have to use some transistors to engage the buttons. I scraped off the carbon of the pads and I'm soldering these ancient transistors to them. The code for my project is pretty simple. Basically this is based off the Hello World example for the RGB LCD shield. It's just including all the necessary libraries. Then I'm defining all the variables and pins that I need. I make sure to pull every one of those lines high because the transistors engage when they get put low, so high is off by default. I start the LCD, I write tiny vacuum form and give some instructions like press select and then it's just mapping the buttons and reading the buttons. So for example if you push the button up then the display will read heat on, the pin will get pulled low, there's a delay for debounce and then it will high again to turn it off because that's the way how the remote control works. Same thing for all the other buttons. Button select is a little bit special because this one gives you the instructions how to connect the heat gun and the vacuum cleaner. Okay now the prototype is finished. The code is finished. 
and we will try it out. I'm just connecting my Arduino to a power source. It's booting up and press select. So I press select and it tells me my heat gun should connect, be connected to the remote outlet A and the vacuum should be connected to type B. Needs a lot of heat. You can see it's getting softer over here. I can dent it with my finger. Take a look at this beautiful result. You can even see tiny chips. You can see the SMD components. It's completely formed over there. But the downside, the Raspberry Pi is also in there. So let's apply some force and ha! it got out of there. And it's burning hot. <laughs> okay, lesson learned. Hot Raspberry Pis stay hot for longer than the plastic. So in conclusion, the tiny vacuum forming machine is a success. I managed to build it without damaging my appliances, so my heat gun stays a heat gun, the vacuum cleaner stays a vacuum cleaner, so if you want to build your own, you can still use them as they are. I used an Arduino and a display shield to make it more convenient to operate, so you just press a button and it activates the right sequence, but I can't make it automated, because I tried to use some timing loops and some uh, measuring, but that doesn't work out, because the plastic always has to be in a certain stage of melting or drooping. You can see that, but it's hard to measure with a microcontroller. It's not about timing. The timing seems to be different at random. The same stock sheet of polystyrene takes random times to heat up, sometimes slower, sometimes faster, sometimes it droops more or earlier or later, depending on ambient temperature, wind, magic in the air, or some other random stuff I can't think about. So that's pretty hard to automate. Maybe I would tackle this problem in the future, but that's a whole different story and a whole different beast to accomplish. What would you have done differently? Have you ever formed something with vacuum forming? Or is there any project you can think of that you could do with vacuum forming? Tell us on the Element 14 community. I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me. Structural. Structural. Structural.